Hi, everyone. I hope um, this session and um, uh, we'll find you well and healthy, you and your loved ones. Uh, today is a great <clears throat> weather in Nur Sultan. Um, so we've got, we've got quite a number of people here. Great. Um, you, can, you can actually write here in the chat which city are you from and what kind of weather do you have. Now, um, welcome you all to the robotics and mechatronics session. Uh, we've got a super cool uh, speakers today. Uh, we've got, you know, um, three different speakers with their own experiences and their own knowledge, uh, which they're gonna share with us. And perhaps um, they might interest you in this major, All right? So, um, okay. So let me introduce you to the speakers of today's session. Okay. So first of all, we've got a third year student um, uh, studying in this major, um, working on his research, Azamat Abdikarimov. Hi. Hello, guys. Yeah. Okay. How's it going for you? Yep. Uh, I'm good. And you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Next, we've got um, Nardolia Jusbai. Uh, and again, I'm uh, so sorry, guys. We 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 have uh, we've written his name as Norjan, but yeah, uh, kind of my mistake. His name is Nardolia Jusbai. Okay. He's a fourth year student. He's got a nice background. Yeah. That's office, right? Great. Uh, how's it going for you? Everything is going well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And we've got a graduate student with us, Asset Malik. Hello, everyone. Oh, great. Uh, so um, now um, I think we can actually start with the first speaker, Azamat. Word to you. Uh, yep, thanks. Can you? Um, can I show my screen? Yeah, sure. You've got co-host, right? Um, just a second. Yeah. Um, guys, can you wait just for a minute? Yeah, oh, sure. Um, meanwhile, I will tell you the plan of today's session. You might have. You might actually uh, have seen it. Uh, we will have three different speakers speaking on their own time. After each speaker, we will have a Q&A session where you can ask um, questions that are interesting to you. And then uh, at the very end, uh, after all the speakers done, we will talk about um, different um, topics in this major, right? Okay, so Azamat, could you try now? Oh, great, yeah. Do you see? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, hello one more time, guys. Uh, my name is uh, Azamat, and uh, as Olan introduced me, I'm a third year robotics and uh, mechatronics student. So, uh, for, for my presentation, I just wanted like to, to talk about my background a bit. So I was, uh, till the 10th grade, I was studying like in a simple school in Astana. And uh, in parallel, uh, I was uh, going to Dvaryat Shkolnikov. If you're a Stana resident, you know this, um, this building. So there, there was a, like robotics club. And um, guys from there, they teach me like uh, basics, like of soldering, uh, of uh, like how to, how to work with Arduino, how to work with uh, Lego Mindstorms. And uh, yeah, that was like the moment when I, uh, started to have an interest uh, to robotics. Um, and then in 2016, um, the branch of uh, National School of Physics and Mass, like Erfamasha, opened uh, in Astana. So I entered this school um, where we had also robotics club. And actually the head of the robotics club and our teacher was alumni from Nazarbayev University. Uh, he's also a robotics uh, student. So yeah, uh, there like we had a lot of uh, money, if we can say so. 
and uh, we were able like to participate in different uh, championships uh, and we had like different projects for example one of them was uh, Infomatrix if you know this is like a championships uh, championship which is like held in uh, Sultan Demirel University every year so yeah we were participating there um, yeah so this is like my experience uh, from school and like at that point in 10th and 11th grade I knew that I will like study something like related to like electronics and robotics. And then uh, I entered foundation e program. Actually for this slide, I just didn't know what to put. Uh, and uh, we have this kind of uh, meme. Uh, yeah, if you like watch uh, my new do stories from Instagram, you see this guy uh, every time. Uh, he is actually also a robotics student. Uh, he's my uh, group mate. So yeah, when I entered foundation year program, I still didn't know like what to study. I had um, to choose between uh, electrical engineer or uh, robotics uh, and mechatronics. So um, I was like, uh, I was uh, thinking about what to choose. And uh, firstly, like different, um, uh academic advising unit sessions helped me uh to know better the major also i had some friends from these majors and they were like introduced to these majors and uh, i understand uh understood that in electrical uh, uh deeply but uh, with the robotics uh, major uh you also study electronics but at the same time you also have like um, machine learning courses you have 3d modeling courses uh, mechanics courses so um and yeah at this point i understand that it would be better for me to study uh for robotics and mechatronics major then uh i will skip the first year because it's not really interesting it's like just calculus and physics uh, courses, uh, even though I did not really good on them and I had like low GPA, something around 2.5 GPA, uh, but that was only because I didn't study well. I just was, I was mostly procrastinating and like, this is not good, but that, how was it? Uh, and yeah, let's uh, talk about the second year. And uh, at this uh, time, it was like the COVID, the quarantine, um and we didn't like we didn't manage to study uh these courses uh these four courses um uh, with uh real hardware like this is electrical circuits one this is electrical circuits two i'm sorry for that mistake and also we had a microcontrollers course and signals and systems course so um yeah like usually uh students uh, go to laboratories uh during the offline and uh work with the real hardware but at the same time like many of our professors they uh tried they, their best uh, in order to like to simulate everything to show us how it works for example um if you will study robotics you will know uh professor janat kapasov he was a uh, lab instructor for electrical circuits and for microcontrollers so he had like um he was sharing his uh screen he was like he had two or three cameras which were pointing like one camera was pointing to the electrical circuit another camera was pointing to his hand another camera was pointing pointing to the uh, function generator and he was like trying really uh his best in order like to explain us everything and uh and also uh i would like to say thanks to my group mates they're like really amazing it's not only for for my group mates uh i'm sure uh guys like uh all, if you ask every robotic student like from different years they will say that their group mates are like the best uh so yeah with with them like we were keeping in touch and COVID wasn't like so uh stressful and yeah it, it was like it was a disaster and also it was like very uh excited like year interesting year and also um uh, during the second year, uh, I applied to Vayana uh, Cathedra in Russian. So uh, why uh, there are two reasons for 
applying to this cathedra. So the first one is like to um, not so, so that after my graduating uh, guys from army will not take me to the army. And the second reason is that uh, like robotics and military, uh, they're somehow connected. So I thought like, this is like one of the opportunities uh, for me to, to work in military uh, after graduating. So maybe this will help me, maybe not. Uh, so like, if you will have this opportunity, um, you, you may try it. So maybe it would be useless to you, but maybe like if you go to some companies uh, who makes, for example, I don't know, tanks, but in Kazakhstan, we don't do tanks, but maybe uh, the fact that you have like Zvanya uh, Fitzera uh, and that you know military will somehow help you. And also uh, now I'm a third year student and uh, I'm a research student, uh, research assistant uh, in a tactile lab. So we have different labs, different professors have their own labs. So this is tactile lab uh, held by uh, Janat Kapasov. So here we mostly do uh, research uh, projects related like to the sensors, to some tactile sensors and uh, other stuff. Actually, I just, uh, I just started to work in there like months ago. Um, I can't really say like much about it. Uh, I, I just can say that there are a lot of things to learn and a lot of opportunities and I'll, I'll see. So now I'm just like uh, trying to, to learn uh, many things. Like uh, the first thing I learned was uh, how to uh, print uh, different 3D models, how to make them, how to print them. Uh, and yeah, like uh, step-by-step step, I'm, how, how to say like, trying to enhance my skills, yep. And uh, what is next uh, for after graduating? Uh, like now, uh, I don't have a certain plan. I'm just, I just have a plan to, to make the best, uh, like try to, to do my best and like make a good research uh, papers, uh, try to boost my GPA as high as I can. And then like uh, maybe after one year, when I will force your students, uh, I will have like better vision because like I will try to uh, apply to master's degree, but at the same time, maybe if I will uh, find some like good uh, job opportunities, maybe I'll just, uh, maybe I'll just start to work rather than studying masters. So, uh, Yep, this, uh, thank you for your attention. This is the end of my presentation. So if you have any questions, uh, I can answer them. Yeah, guys, if you have any questions, you can just unmute yourself or write your question in chat. Yeah, any questions, guys? All right, what kind of jobs? What kind of jobs? Uh, then we we'll so, apply after graduation, yeah. Uh, so uh, I didn't uh, talk about the, the courses that we're taking. I think like uh, Asiat and uh, Nordalia, they will have like better explanations for them as they like already had, had taken those courses. So, um, we have uh, courses such, uh, such as like machine learning uh, or power systems. So uh, if you're like taking the elective machine learning after graduation, uh, if you have enough knowledge, if you're like studied well and also had like self-study for machine learning, you can go to different companies uh, and work there as a, like to, to the jobs related to machine learning. Uh, for example, like one of my friend, he's like, he graduated this year uh, and he's going to work uh, in Dusan Bank. Yes, in Dusan Bank. Uh, and his like job uh, is related to machine learning. Or, um, or for example, uh, there is a course power systems. Uh, so this is like the continuation of electrical circuits. And uh, if you like uh, know this uh, 
if you know electronics uh, really well, you can go to different uh, manufacturers uh, in that in uh, Astana, for example. Uh, as far as I know, there's like company uh, Acel Sun. They have different uh, PCB PCBs, and you can work there. Um, also, uh, uh, as robotics. Uh, so yeah, also we have like for example the course industrial automation. So there we have like. Uh, I didn't take this course yet, but as far as I know, there's like uh, a laboratory, the special laboratory, which is uh, similar to the ones which are in the factories um, with the different steps of uh, manufacturing. And if you study this, you can go to, for example, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, if if this like wrong, Asiat and Nuralet can, uh, can uh, Say something so you can go for example to uh milk fabrics and, and like or i don't know uh the, to the fabrics that make certain products and have certain uh automated like systems and you can uh like work with them so that they don't like don't broke and that they're working well yeah uh about the europe uh, i don't really know um uh, what is happening in Europe now with the with the robotics uh, jobs, and yeah, but uh, you need to understand that uh, this is like just my uh, subjective point of view, and also like I don't uh, I didn't get many courses yet, elective courses, and uh, I didn't make a good research about. Uh, what what are the jobs like in other countries related to robotics? Is it well paid? Well, uh, it depends. It depends on your skills, but uh, I think like the starting uh, salaries are something around two hundred thousand tingas, and then uh, like the more you work, the more experience you get, like the salary will go higher. But like at some places you just go and they will pay you like 300,000 tenge from the start or there are some companies, uh, as I heard like Beeline company, they will, for the machine learning, they will pay you like 150,000 tenge from the start. So it depends, it depends on the company itself. It depends on the work are you doing and uh, to the experience you have. I think like you, you can also, uh, I said in Nordolet can also uh, answer to these questions like right now so that we can move on. Yeah, sure. Uh, I said, do you have anything to add about that? About the salaries? Salaries. Yeah. And I, I will include it in my presentation, I guess. Again? I will you... include it in my speech. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, uh, any more questions? Any more questions, one? Any more questions, two? All right, no questions. So um, let's move on to the next uh, cool speaker. Uh, Nordolia Jusbai, he's a senior, uh, right? Yeah, he's a senior. Okay, I'm kidding. He's a senior at our Nazarbayev University, um, uh, majoring in robotics, right? Tell the word to you. Oh, sorry, I forgot to turn on the mic. Uh, so, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nordovlet, and I'm a senior robotics student at robotics major. Uh, so. Little details, details about me. So I'm currently a research assistant working on photoelastic effect based tactile sensor, uh, which uh, which uh, aims to uh, which is which is a tactile sensor uh, to robots. Uh, in the past, I was a data analyst at smart solution company. Uh, also, I was a I worked at uh, research and development center at Korkem Telecom Company, you know as Sergek. So 
maybe I have good academic standing. I don't know, uh, but it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, so what are we gonna talk about? First, I will give a brief introduction to robotics. Second, we'll talk about courses you have to take and then research and job perspectives in this field. Uh, first, what is robotics? Uh, robotics is a mixture of many, many different uh, fields of engineering and science, especially electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and programming. Uh, from electrical engineering side, we have electronics, uh, like you'll, you'll uh, build circuits on breadboards or other, other circuits. You'll work with microcontrollers, microcomputers like Raspberry Pi. Also, you'll, you'll work with embedded systems, which is a more advanced level of microcontrollers. Uh, from mechanical engineering side, uh, you'll have to analyze statics and dynamics uh, of the robot, uh, build a stress strain curve, uh, and work with computer aided design like this. You'll have to work with uh, SolidWorks or Fusion, uh, whichever software you prefer. And from programming, you'll have machine learning, deep learning, robot control, and software programming. Also, you'll have work with MATLAB, Python, C++, uh, robot operating system platform. Also, this is PyTorch, which is a framework for deep learning uh, libraries. Or you can use TensorFlow, whichever you prefer. So uh, which courses you'll take in this field, in this major? Uh, in the second year, You'll have electrical and electronic circuits as uh, as Ahmad said, but uh, yeah, unfortunately they didn't have experience to work in the lab, to work with a real hardware like this. This is a this is called breadboard, and you'll uh, learn many many uh, things. You'll have to work with resistors, with capacitors, with transistors, diodes, uh, and many other things, uh, and I know, I believe that uh, working in the lab, like lab sessions will give a profound knowledge of the subject. Also, we have signal processing uh, in which you uh, analyze signals, uh, analyze uh, different kinds of filters, like high pass, low pass filters uh, in which, uh, and you will analyze how these filters help you reduce some noises. Also, we have microcontrollers uh, here you can see uh, Arduino in the uh, in the above photo, and uh, we have here FPGA, which is programmable gate array. Uh, in the this is these are the uh, advanced levels of microcontrollers. But if you return to the campus, if you have offline lectures, you uh, you will have a fortune working with this, uh, and I think it would be very cool. Uh, in the Third year, uh, you will have to study many theoretical uh, theoretical subjects. For example, linear, linear control theory, in which you will learn about uh, control control systems, uh, like how they like in the above photo. Do I have? Ah, yeah. Oh, I I. Uh, like you learn about control systems, what is a uh, fit back loop, what is a fit forward loop, and uh, in the beginning you may not understand why you need this, but uh, in the fourth year you'll you'll see that this is used a lot in the in the robotics robotics field, like these controllers, PID controllers, prog uh, proportional integral derivative controls are very widely used, so. It's a very good suggestion to study this when you have a when you have an opportunity to study, uh, and uh, you'll you'll study mechanical design. You'll use SolidWorks in the labs. Uh, you will design stress strain curves. Uh, you will study failure series, uh, and these are very uh, this is these are not easy concepts, but uh, learning this will help you get a good job in the robotics field. So, and the last is electromechanical systems. Uh, in the electromechanical systems, you, you will study different kinds of motors like AC motor, alternative current motor, DC motor, direct current motors, 
and uh, many other uh, subjects. Also, in the robotics, we have major electives. Uh, I'm gonna talk about only those electives that I took. First is uh, human-human-robot interaction, uh, in which you will study, uh, in which you will study uh, ethical principles of interacting with robots, uh, how you can design those robots to interact with human. Uh, machine learning. Uh, here we can. Uh, there you will study different kinds of uh, libraries like linear regression, logistic regression, support vector machines, and many others to uh, to suit them to your needs. Also, you will study deep learning uh, a bit there, but uh, I think it would be a good beginning, good beginning to your to your journey in the machine learning field. Also, we have power electronics, which Azamat said is an advanced level of electronic circuits. There you'll uh, study inverters and converters, basically, uh, which are used to uh, increase the output voltage or vice versa, decrease the output voltage. And uh, you'll design this, these circuits from scratch by yourself. And image processing, uh, there you'll study many techniques of image processing from edge detection to uh, color isolation. Uh, also, this uh, in this all these uh, courses, we used to build uh, these uh, libraries by our, by ourselves. Uh, I think it's a very cool experience to know what's happening in your system, in your model, by yourself, uh, rather than using uh, libraries that uh, already exist. So, in the fourth year. Uh, in the first year, uh, the main uh, subject that you're going to study is robotics, control, and learning. Uh, in this, uh, in this uh, lesson, you will learn how to use a robot operating system. This is uh, abbreviated as ROS, uh, which is widely used in the industry, in the research. It's used everywhere. So it's, uh, good. it's good to know how to use this. So in the picture in the left, you can see a planar robot with five degrees of freedom. Uh, it's a computer simulation of this robot in the gazebo. So uh, we, we, may, we write controllers to move this robot in the simulation. Also, we have a real robot here, which is called Franca Emica Manipulator. So uh, we also use robot operating system to move this robot. In the uh, gripper of this robot, you can see a uh, tactile sensor, which is attached to this, so it can measure the uh, contact forces and, uh, and stop when it's too high. So uh, we talked about courses. So let's talk about research opportunities that we have in our university. Uh, we have a lot of high skilled, highly skilled pro professors. Uh, this is Atakan Varol, which is a chair department of robotics. Uh, and we have uh, many other professors. You can search for this uh, information in the website called research.mu.edu.kz. Uh, here we have, uh, there we have a lot of information about our professors, about their research interests, what are they currently doing and what are their publica publications. So you can look, you can uh, compare them, you can uh, you can write them. Actually, don't be afraid to write the professors asking for guidance for help. Uh, if you want to join join the lab, you have to write them and ask what what you gonna what you what you should do, because uh, every professor has uh, different requirements for the student. So uh, we have. Uh, Robot Control and Learning Lab, which is Matteo Robagotti's lab, Tactile Lab, which is Renat Kapasov's lab. Also, we have Berdach Abibulayev, who is working on brain-computer interface. Isai and Arms Lab, uh, Atakan's labs. So, and uh, many other professors who are also working in the robotics field. Um, you can search for the information in, the, in this site, which is given. And uh, most importantly, I think, is job uh, job perspectives what you can do after graduating uh, from my own experience i can say that you can easily work in data science and research and development centers at different uh, big companies for example uh, you can 
data science includes not only working in the banks and the other like uh, such companies, but you can also be a computer vision engineer working with cameras, working with other different stuff. You can be a machine learning engineer, deep learning engineer. Uh, data science is a very broad field. So if you if you want to dig into this uh, field, don't be afraid and just study because data science is all about studying, is all about searching and researching. Uh, research and development centers, uh, many big different co companies have research and development centers uh, in which they try to improve their products, uh, in, in which they uh, like do a lot of stuff. So I worked in one of these uh, centers. Uh, we tried to, we made a, we, we tried to make a camera, like Sergei camera that is attached to a police car. So they can, uh, so they can give straps while they write. <laughs> also, you can be a CAD designer. You can design uh, several CAD models. If you are very high skilled in this, uh, it's not a big problem. Also, you can be a control engineer. If you uh, studied uh, very good linear control theory, uh, you can be a control engineer. You can design uh, different controllers for uh, different applications. And uh, I, I'm going to be honest, uh, we don't have control engineer, much control position, uh, control engineer positions in Kazakhstan, but this uh, work job is very uh, like widely spread in other countries like USA, uh, Europe. So it won't be a problem, I think. And many more. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities after graduating. So don't be afraid to come to the robotics because of uh, because of some rumors that they that you won't have a job after graduating so general advice to freshmen first is do not cheat uh, you have to understand that knowing and understanding are the different things so cheating won't help you in any way so do not cheat study it your own way Attend all the labs that is provided that are provided. If you if it will be online uh, offline, it's very good. Uh, during labs, you will uh, understand theoretical knowledge that is given uh, in the lectures. Practically, it's very good opportunity. Always ask questions. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions from professors, from your fellow mates. It's it's a good practice. Uh, and the last but not the least important is try to correct your time management because robotics is not as, as, as easy course as it's uh, imagined. So you'll have a, a lot of workload to study, a lot of workload, a lot of things to study. So if you want uh, study them like periodically, uh, it might become a huge problem. So uh, it's my four advices during that I, uh, got through these four years at the Nazarbayev University. So uh, thanks everybody who listened. If you have any questions, you can ask now or you can write me an email. I will always, always uh, answer. Hey, thank you for your great presentation. You know, you should be working on the marketing and PR of the robotics major. Yeah, they really got me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, is the third year late to transfer? Okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, uh, so we got a question here from um, Bin Mohamed. Uh, so he's asking, uh, do I have, okay, well, I have enough time to study courses from other majors and attend clubs if I apply for robotics. So is there a time to, you know, yep. to attend Definitely. clubs or Definitely. social activities? Definitely. Uh, even if, even though a robotics major is tough, but as Azamat said, I will agree with him. Uh, we have best professors, and uh, they they will not uh, put uh, very strict regulations. They will not uh, give uh, too much homeworks. They are understanding professors, and I think you will have a lot of time to attend clubs. I myself. 
uh, worked during this my third year, my second year. So I didn't face any problems at all. Oh, great. Oh, there is uh, there are people asking your telegram. Um, yes, of I course. Think, uh, yeah. If, if, if you don't mind, uh, you can actually write it in the chat. But um, if you actually. This is my oh, all right. uh, phone number. So you'll get a lot of texts after the session. Uh, how many robots <laughs> have you created? I haven't created any robot. I don't know if I will create anyone. Uh, like, but I think uh, learning to control a robot it's is also a good practice. <laughs> it's not a it's not an easy job, but uh, if you learn to control, it's very uh, it's very good. When we will be able to create our own robots, you can create your own robots, your small robots. Uh, at, at home, uh, using this knowledge you gained uh, in the robotics major. What are your plans for future? Yes, I'm applying to master's degree. I want to pursue um, academics uh, because I really like robotics major because uh, I think, yeah, I see a lot of perspectives in the, like in the job side or like, academics i think uh, yeah i will continue with masters and if it goes well i will continue to phd but if not i will go to industry work yeah um taking you back to that question someone asked uh if i'm not mistaken uh so you're working in different uh companies is it I well paid you don't I have work. to um actually announce your salary but is it well paid uh, paid, very well paid. I will say that I worked there for one, like I worked in the one company one semester, in the second one semester, and I uh, like I have uh, some money. So I, I'm not working now, but I'm a research assistant. Uh, but as you know, uh, money of a, like salary of a research assistant is not so it's not so big. So I'm using the money that left from these jobs to live now. <laughs> so I think it's very oh, well paid. Yeah, all right, all right. So guys, get it noted. So it's very <laughs> well paid, yeah. Okay, um, let me, okay, Madina is asking, is there a fixed schedule? Um, so as far as I heard, Ang Major do not let no, you register for them, or is this different for robotics? It's flexible. Uh, yeah, we have some major core courses that we should take, uh, but we also have electives. We'll, it's like uh, old SST. So uh, we have a lot of electives. We can re register ourselves. We have flexible uh, schedule, but yeah, we have core courses that is not, uh, uh, that we should take anyway. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. Is there any questions, guys? Uh, so I have a lot of questions for you guys, but I think I will hold them for discussion. Okay. Can we take CS or EC electives? For example, yes. brain computer interface. Of course. Yes, we yeah. of course can take CS electives. Uh, sometimes Atakan can. Uh, like sometimes they can be uh, counted as major electives, although they are technical electives. Uh, I'm not sure about electrical engineers electives, but I'm sure that we can take computer science electives. Uh, but I know that electrical engineers took our electives like image processing, machine learning courses. So maybe it works in both ways. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, so, that's quite like, flexible, actually. Yeah. yeah, like electrical engineers uh, taking our electives, I think it says something about our major. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Not comparing, though, right? Yeah. I'm not okay. comparing, but yeah. just for speaking. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, any more questions, guys? This is a rare opportunity. So, any should questions? I, should I stop sharing my screen? 
I I said, do you have a um, yeah? All right. Um, no more questions. One. No more questions. Two. Solved. All right. So we are moving on to the next um, presenter speaker. Asel is a graduate student at NU, right? Um, so the word to you. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm going to be focusing not on the lectures. I guess I'm going to be focusing more on the life aspect of the. Yeah. My background was quite good. When I was at school, I've been attending the so it's a place where you can build uh, uh, ships, uh, yeah, flying stuff and things. And I learned electrical engineering there. So I've been soldering and creating circuits and stuff. It was about seven, so it's great. And yeah, so initially I thought I'm going to be learning electrical engineering as a major in uh, Nazarbayev University. But when I was uh, progressing in my life, I started doing websites. I made websites for money. And I thought that maybe I'm going to be in a computer science major because it's, it gives me money. Yeah. So, uh, and I've been between those two majors uh, and couldn't decide. So I attended to foundation years to see whether or not I'm going to like it or not. And uh, in my first year of uh, Nazarbayev University, we built a car. We built a car <laughs> yeah and uh, with that car we went to singapore and uh, we didn't win anything yeah we've been uh, 13th in the top uh, out of 100 teams from different uh, yeah yeah that that famous car in you and uh, that was the moment when i thought that yeah i'm gonna be staying here i'm gonna be staying at uh, robotics <laughs> you know, while at robotics still We've been still doing electrical stuff. Yes, yeah, this is the um, clock that been uh, in the atrium. Uh, so we made the uh, electrical clock to the atrium. Yeah, we also uh, participated to the uh, gaming uh, competitions. Like this is the global game jam when you create a game yeah, in a in a short period of time, you have only two days to make a full game. So uh, together with robotics, we made the computer game. Yeah. Does that say that we are kind of CS students and kind of electrical? Yes, we are. We are three in one. So, it's a, so uh, that is why I think that robotics is a best major because you can be anything. You are, you are a princess, actually. <laughs> okay. And the uh, life is good. Uh, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, you you can hang out with friends and stuff. Like, uh, yeah, we, we have a, a cat uh, in the lab, so you can come and pet the cat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, usually at the lab, we do some fun stuff like uh, craving and knitting, and yeah, like we do anything. <laughs> also, the pranks, like, this is our um, it's a laboratory and we just uh, put uh, Rustam's face on every PC and it's life. <laughs> While studying, I had a lot of time to do my own things. In my first year, while uh, doing the robotics, uh, the, the car, I also made a startup and uh, it was a, a online school for studying for uh, Mufipet, I guess. And uh, We've made in our first season of 400,000 tenge in revenue. Yeah, it, it was a small team with uh, mostly bio, biology students and I was the webmaster. So I'm, I've been doing a website, they've been doing a content and yeah, it, it, good times. It still works and still provides some small amount of money, but yeah, not so much. And uh, that was the time when I thought that I need more skills. So I attended to work. This is Tarka. Tarka is uh, well known in small um, yeah, communities. <laughs> and I worked there for two years. I worked there as an electrical engineer mostly. And I've done circuits uh, for them and stuff. But when the uh, COVID crisis hit, I had to leave the job. So I've been mostly uh, freelancing, freelancing as a 3D, uh, 3D designer. I've been uh, drawing in Blender and Fusion for about 
320,000 tenge a month. Uh, not so much, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you can freelance as a 3D develop, uh, designer because uh, you will learn 3D modeling in this major. Yeah, it's uh, our one of the core studies. Uh, when I was uh, freelancing, I found uh, an, a good startup called Unai. Uh, this is the French guy who suggested me to work there. And he said something like, um, I am sorry, but as a freelancer, we won't uh, provide you a full salary. So that is why we are going to give you only $50,000 a year. <laughs> <laughs> will you accept this <laughs> and i was like <laughs> i'm not sure <laughs> but yeah i did accept it <laughs> yeah um the difference in the salary was given uh, as an equity so uh yeah when if these startups become uh, worldwide and world known yeah i will have my small uh, percentage from the salary of the company yeah but i don't work there now when i was working there i've been again electrical engineer i've worked on mostly some connections cameras or displays um, or protocols and stuff so yeah <clears throat> the things you learn here at microcontrollers so and stuff. yeah you, you will learn that stuff and now I'm uh, a graduate student. Um, due to COVID, I didn't really travel much, uh, but I will someday, I guess. Yeah, I'm right now uh, working at Alaris Lab. We are just uh, published our recent paper. Yeah, with this guy again. This yeah, yeah. We have a gym, and it costs only 500 tenge a month. Yeah, it's the best gym I've seen, and it costs only 500 tenge. Yeah, think about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, mostly my free time, I go to the climbing and with guys. Yeah, so the life is good. <laughs> yeah, come to robotics. <laughs> Yeah, I agree that we have, a, I think, the best community in the, this university. Best community in the best community. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Ali, I'm sorry uh, for interrupting that many uh, climbers from our universities are actually <laughs> robotic students. Like, it's either robotic students or biology students. Is there I, I don't any know correlation? If, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But they are strong. There were never like math students or humanities students. It's just like only robotics and biology students and mostly robotics students. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like a closed party. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, guys, any, any questions? I think you guys have some questions for a sip. Um, so, uh, how is the startup uh, from the French? You mentioned they started from the French. Yeah. How's it now? Uh, I don't know. I got out of there because of the midterms. I couldn't uh, keep up with two things at once. So I, I thought oh. when I was applying, I thought that it's going to be a summer internship. And uh, but they said something like, can you finish your task till the end of the month? And I was like, wow. <laughs> I'm quitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been there only for several weeks, actually. And uh, I quit in a short amount of time, but they still gave me something around 500 bucks for my two weeks of actual work. <laughs> no, that's, that's quite a lot, actually, for a student. Oh, we've got questions. All right. Uh, why did you prefer graduate school at Nazarbayev University over oh. other schools? Uh, it's right. because I'm a bad student. I have a low GPA of 2.7 and something like that. That is why I couldn't really go to the uh, good universities abroad. I was accepted to several universities, but those were not so good. Like, would you rather prefer uh, studying in a bad university abroad or a good university here? Uh, I was like, yeah, like, dreams a bit so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's about the gym. All right, all right. <laughs> oh, well, we've got one more question. I'm a first year 
ECE student, electrical and chemi chemi chem chemical, right? Um, yes, sir. Why do. would ECE student want to change their major to robotics? You don't need to. Actually, it's mostly up to you what you do, what you, what subjects you choose and stuff. You can be a successful ECE student or be a successful robotics student. Right? Oh. Yeah, it seems to be easier. Yes, I, I agree with someone that said that robotics is easier to ECE. Do you have girls, girls in, in your major? You don't have much girls. In my uh, year, we had only three girls in a 30 person uh, group. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's so, compare it. Uh, we have like half of our students are girls, half are boys. So it's, really? uh, yeah, equality. It's OK. Oh, OK. <laughs> Okay, as a man. We're as good in equality as uh, fourth year students. We, we have like six, six girls, six or seven girls, and 20, around 20 guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not, that's not so lot as in Nordaulet's here. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's quite, you know, a strange trend. All right. All right. Don't share this information with Equality Club please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. All right. Uh, any more questions, guys? Okay. Okay. So again, uh, I think now we can actually enter to a discussion mode where um, everyone can actually unmute themselves and, you know, um, ask something or add something from their own experience or um, just enter the discussion, all right? That's, you know, this is more informal, guys, all right? So if you if you want to tell something, if you want to ask something, feel free to do so. Now, I just want to ask you guys about um, time management, all right? Uh, so, for example, Nordaliat was working in, uh, you know, he was studying and working at some, you know, a serious companies. I said he was working on startups and freelance. Azamat is uh, taking military, um, classes or working in military department. Yeah, something like so. And studying as well. How do you guys do it? That takes a lot of time. So you don't hang out. So it takes some experience to learn how to do it, I, I think. You Can have you to first fail this, then you'll learn, I think. What do you mean by fail? Fail, fail on the midterm? Fail on the midterm, fail on the GPA. And then I think you learn it hard way. I failed my first year. So after this, I started learning and started boosting my GPA, my academic life, my work life, everything. So, but maybe there are other ways, but I learned this way. Oh, you learned it hard way. Yeah, I see. Okay. I think like when, when I have so many things to do, like the first thing that that you do is like you sleep less. So this is this is not good. But uh, sometimes, like if you want to manage everything, you just need to sleep like one or two hours less than you than you do. But but it depends yeah. on, the, on the person itself. Like I can sleep like for six hours, for seven hours, and that will be okay. But like others need more sleep or, or less sleep so it depends so yeah you sacrifice sleep to do things right i said any tips uh, i didn't really appreciate gpa i think it is kind of good to have a good one but yeah <laughs> you can not so important yeah i i don't believe in gpa oh Okay, yeah, that explains. Yeah. Um, and also, okay. uh, I would like to add that, uh, so uh, sometimes when I have a lot of things to do and, and uh, some of my friends just like call me and ask me if you want like to go to somewhere to sit and like to have a good time. I always uh, try to go there. Uh, like I understand that like deadlines and like work stuff it never ends like there will be like we're almost like real adults and in our life we will not have like 
such like moments when you have free time so yeah for for friends for families for family i think uh, you will always um, have to find uh, time even if it's like only for one hour or for two hours i think it's important to prioritize yeah agree yeah okay oh yeah we've got a question All right if if biomedical engineering or data science is priority for masters is robotics appropriate major so Okay, I understand that if you want to apply for biomedical engineering or data science, is robotics okay as a background, yeah? Most of the university is going to be looking at your uh, classes you've took and compare them to the classes required. And most of the time, uh, it depends on the university. If they require some courses that you didn't took, you most likely not going to be accepted. And uh, because we have three different majors in one, we have a lot of uh, stuff to learn that are not directly or indirectly connected to biomedical or data science. That is why I believe that I'm not sure if it's a good path to be robotics and then biomedical. So you have to actually research it, research it from the first yes. year if you, if you want to apply for master's. Yeah. Okay, so you have to think, you know, in advance. All right, yeah. Shahnazar, did 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 they said answer your answer answer your question? Oh, great, yeah. Okay. Um. All right. So now, um, uh, one more interesting thing uh, I wanted to ask about is, um, uh, what is the future of robotics in you know here in Kazakhstan? How do you think? Is it gonna? I think in, in a pure form, the robotics is too expensive to be uh, built in a current situation of Kazakhstan's economical. Uh, yeah, that is why I don't believe that we're gonna be having pure robotics, but we are gonna have a lot of things that are closely related to robotics. Uh, like they, we have cast drone, they build drones, they need uh, yeah, control engineers. We have uh, Sergey Akia, who they need data science and uh, visual processing stuff. Uh, we do all these things. Uh, we can work anywhere. Oh, yeah. So no pure robotics, but actually applied, ro applied robotics, right? Okay. Yeah. OK. So yeah, as I said and what Dolet said, uh, they introduced uh, elective courses that we have. So uh, yeah, in robotics, we study uh, many different uh, areas of robotics and then like uh, in Kazakhstan I think you just like uh, choose one path for example like I don't know 3D modeling and you just like work with 3D modeling in different companies or if you like choose uh, machine learning then you will just like uh, enhance your knowledge your experience and then also like work in different companies as a machine learning expert and etc so there i think there is no like the specific uh place in kazakhstan where they need a guy robotics guy they rather need electrical like engineer or i don't know machine learning experts so so yeah we studied these things and we can go there and work there oh yeah so yeah, I, I see from your speeches, it's very, you know, broad and applied. Actually, you know, uh, I even saw uh, robotics students ro and robotics, robotics uh, graduates um, in one um, uh, finance company. So they do consulting, financial consulting, and I saw quite the number of um, robotics students. So I actually talked to them and I, and I asked, well, you know, what's the... What's the path? How did you come here from robotics and you're doing a financial consulting? So again, I, I, I'm not sure, uh, I'm not an expert here, but um, I think it's more about uh, how you study and what do you know, rather than you know, uh, what kind of major do you have? So, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm gonna add to that. 
uh, when I was at uh, first Echo Shell Marathon, I was the only student that was in the first grade. Other students were graduate year uh, students. And when they graduated, right after graduation with a car, they've gone to Ersten Young and Koch and some others. <laughs> yeah, but those are not even aerobics close uh, jobs. They're, you know, consulting. Like, yeah. So, yeah, uh, even, even those consulting companies will need uh, robotics. Like, they will need data science students to optimize the bots, to optimize the uh, suggestion algorithms. So, I think that uh, it, it is not about, it's not about what major are you in, but about what you know and what you have studied in the university. So I'm, I'm sure that the major is not very crucial in while you search for job, but it's a very good, uh, like it, it's a very good uh, guidance uh, in how you how, how you can study some certain subjects and robotics is good because it gives uh, like uh, it you you study a lot of things uh, but not dig into this too much and if you decide to uh, have a deep knowledge you can study it yourself I think yeah yeah totally agree. And um, I don't know how is it for you guys. I'm not a robotics student. Uh, I'm a um, math major. So I had a conversation with a professor and I was asking, you know, we're not getting so much knowledge here in online. Um, so he said, yeah, you know, we know, but it's not so important how well you know things. It's important uh, how well you can actually search something and uh, how well you can adapt. So. At this moment, I realize that you know skills are more important than just what we know. Um, so I think that's that might be the same for uh, robotics. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yes, but I think that uh, how well you search is not the best indicator of like your knowledge. I think that uh, how well you understand is is very very important in robotics because we have so many concepts, we have so many formulas, like everything. But uh, even even professors are not are not requiring us to memorize everything. If you will understand the basic concepts, you will uh, you'll know how to use other formulas. So in robotics, I think that uh, understanding is very important. Uh, understanding how different uh, concepts work. So, oh. yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> and also about the skills, uh, I just want to add that uh, when you apply, uh, when you want to be uh, to become a research assistant, a research assistant, and you like uh, contact professors, uh, it is like uh, very good for you that uh, you mention uh, certain skills that you have, like for example uh now uh, during the online um, it is like a bit hard to become a research assistant uh because professor uh never uh saw you like in his real life and he uh and he doesn't know uh, how you work with the hardware because we didn't have uh, hardware uh, like offline labs and like many uh, of uh, us uh, of third year students who are now like research assistant assistants we were like uh listing our skills that we already already have for example i was saying that i like from the as you remember from my presentation during my high school i had this experience i was uh, i knew i know how to solder i know how pcb works and everything and i think this was like very like useful point for me so that uh professor took me uh as his research assistant yeah, and also GPA is also uh, very important. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so in your case, it's more about, so you have to come prepared for, you know, to work in um, robotics labs. No, no. Nope. Nope. Uh, 
uh, first, when I came to the university, I was a physics student, not a robotics. Yeah, I was a physics major. So I transferred from physics in my second year. Uh, and I studied, in the first year, you don't study specific subjects, but in the second year, everything starts. So I was, I transferred from physics, so I didn't have uh, initial knowledge of robotics, well, of soldering, of electronics, anything. But I think that it can be easily learned. So it's, it, won't, it won't be a problem if you don't have knowledge from before. So professors that are okay with you, you know, not knowing um, certain programs. Yes. Oh, yeah, great. So great tolerance from professors. So uh, what, what I said is just like, uh, it is connected to the online where professor couldn't really see uh, which uh, students uh, like can do better in the hardware in the labs. So as far as I know, like uh, when you uh, when we have offline and uh, professors see what students uh, which students uh, does what, uh, then he he like he already know that like student A he is good with uh, with labs he understands everything and student B he is not not really good and so. So student A has like more chances to become a research assistant, but like in online, we don't have this opportunity. So that is why uh, like listing the skills that I already had somehow helped me. Yeah, and, uh, and also GPA is also like uh, important if you like, oh, okay, I will stop here. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, we got a question. Okay, can you name some successful NU robotics graduate students and their story backgrounds? Okay, I'll just add besides the speakers we're having on today. Um, do you know, guys, anyone? Maybe some legends from the robotics major? Bao John Usman, I guess. He is uh, one of the first. Uh, graduates and he been working with Caspos to create a robot that delivers mail and it's currently in their uh, office Kaspos, so you can go there and watch it move around and stuff he is also creating a lot of uh, projects for uh, school children like uh, our local uh, constructors yeah for students to learn from because uh, the government said that every school nowadays need to have IT or robotics as a uh, school subject, yeah. But we have no actual uh, things to learn at those subjects. So he is creating the program for student children, and also he provides a lot of uh, projects for the university, like new locomotion project that he created. So we have a lot of sensors installed around the campus and stuff yeah so i guess he's quite successful you can oh. join him at his cleverest technologies and intern there if you want uh, also i think we have andrey yershov which everyone know i think <laughs> he's, he's robotics a, yeah he's a robotics he's a photographer uh, and currently he got accepted to the german university and got DAAD that scholarship. Uh, he was robotics, but now I think he's he's gonna study physics and photonics. I think photonics. So uh, it's not a problem transferring from robotics to physics. So uh, Andre is also a very successful robotics graduate. He won uh, many uh, contests, for, like linked to photography. So you can search him in the Instagram and, and uh, look, I think. Yeah, so I know Andre from the, uh, every you know, uh, image he's taking of the university. Um, yeah, <laughs> I didn't also know he was about it. Also we studied in the same school. So I think it's very, it's a pleasure for me to study with him. <laughs> oh. Yeah, also, great. Uh, I 
one year ago uh, when me and my group mates who were second year students we were also like having some uh like concerns or like what to do after we graduate from robotics major and uh i think one of our group mates she contacted uh academic advising unit and or I, I don't remember whom she contacted but uh this person uh gathered uh, graduates from robotics major and there were like about five to seven graduates who were uh sharing with us their uh, experience and where they work now there was uh, a guy who now works uh, in Google uh, company in London, as far as I remember. Uh, there was a guy who works in Microsoft. Uh, there was some, it was a, like uh, a girl. She works uh, with some oil companies uh, in the Western Kazakhstan. Um, and yeah, so there were like many uh, cool guys. And I think, um, if you write to academic advising unit or uh, CAC, uh, do you remember how it? Uh, career, career advising center. Yeah, yeah, career and advising center. If you write them, maybe they will. Uh, they can launch uh, another session with their graduates uh, who already work uh, in the yeah in the robotics fields, uh, and you can also like. Mm, listen to them and yeah it'll be useful oh, yeah you. that's a good idea actually yeah that's a good idea yeah again guys um if you need some you know sessions like this or you want to you want some graduates you want some successful and new students to tell you about something it should be your initiative all right so if you want to if, if you want to know something just ask Right. So as Nardolet said, that's a good habit to have to develop. So that should be your initiative. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So quite the number of successful people from robotics. Okay. Okay. Um, do you guys have any, I don't know, anything to answer or oh, any anything to discuss? Because I think I have uh I have asked all my questions that were interesting to me. Maybe something you want to discuss? I have a question. Oh, great. Can I ask, uh, uh, can you please explain more about what do you actually study in robotics? I, I mean, I have read the syllabus and saw so the names of the courses in your presentations, but I understood nothing. Like, can you please? Someone you are going to learn a lot of math. So the foundation of robotics is a math. And you don't actually going to be building stuff and doing stuff unless it's in the simulation. But simulations are also built by math. So yeah. Math words, robotics second. All right. OK. Um, so, uh, for example, uh, during the second year, uh, as uh, Nordolet said, we have, uh, for example, electrical circuits courses. I think like it's, uh, so here we, uh, at these courses, we just uh, learn the basics of electronics. We learn how capacitors works. We learn how uh, transistors works. We learn how to uh, make circuits, how to uh, read circuits, how to understand them. And uh, yeah, or for example, during the, uh, mechanical design course, which is robotics 301 course. Yeah, here uh, we we learn uh, SolidWorks. So if you know this uh, program, it's for 3D modeling. Uh, or for example, during the microcontrollers course, we start from really um, simple Arduino boards. It's like, as far as I remember, it's just like one or two laps for Arduino. And then we like, uh, continue with uh, really uh, like fancy FPGA uh, microchips and etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, as, as guys already yeah, said, uh, we learn different things. We learn electronics, we learn computer science a bit, we learn uh, 3D modeling, mechanics, 
we learn different stuff. Yeah, he has a bunch of them. But we cannot borrow this uh, microcontroller, so don't be fooled by a set that you you all will have these Arduinos <laughs> and STMs. Oh, and I said just hit it like no, it never happened. Yeah, we will we'll cut it out. All right. Yeah. We'll yeah basically, we study uh, how to control robots, how to build circuits, and everything. So I we have that, 3D printers. You can print anything if you want. Yeah, we have 3D printers, a lot of 3D printers, which it use the Tenge holder printed on printer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Also, we have different kinds of 3D printers, which prints with uh, resina and plastic, everything. Oh, yeah. Really? Ah, at FabLab, right? No, at our own labs, we have everywhere. And FabLab also. Yeah, FabLab also is. Oh, that's... Oh, I didn't really know about that. So we... At the university, we have really everything to study robotics. Yes, pretty much everything. Great. Oh, now I'm so jealous. Moreover, like every, uh, like not every, like professors, each professor has its own lab. And in this own lab, this lab has own uh, 3D printers, own uh, like, its own different like things. It's not just like a uh, whole robotics department has like three or four uh, printers. For example, tactile lab, which is uh, Janat Kapasov's lab. We have, uh, I think around um, 10, 10 3D printers only for our lab. And there are like other labs, other robotics labs that have, uh, that has like, they have own like five to ten like printers wait what then 3d printers yeah. <laughs> i think robotics department has a lot of money uh it's not about the robotics department has a lot of money it's, it's about that uh, robotics professors can uh, find the grants grants that and they win grants uh, and they acquire money from the outsource so they can uh, have money themselves and uh, improve their labs, improve their uh, research. So that's... Not comparing though, yeah. But totally not comparing. <laughs> not, not, not comparing though, all right. Okay, yeah. Uh, did you guys study signal processing? No, there are people... Asking. Yes, we study signal processing. Is uh, hard? It's it's hard. Uh, it has hard concepts that it's not easy to understand. But uh, when it comes to practical uh, things, it 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 becomes elementary that how to use this, how to use filters, how to use high pass, low pass, when to use them. So it's about uh, time. And it's about practice. Uh, so I think that signal processing is not so hard now. Oh. OK, so started at the, from the very beginning. OK. Is there more theory or practice in robotics? I think that it's 50-50. Uh, pretty much at every subject we have labs uh, and each subject has a final project uh, no not each but the most of our subjects have final projects so in the final project you implement all the knowledge that you have acquired during the uh, semester uh, it can be it can be knowledge from the other subject also so you you'll build a something big and something interesting so i think that it is 50 50 uh theory and practice oh thank you oh i want to know um a perspective from the 
from Acer, who says that GPA is not so important. Practice or theory? Practice or theory, which one do you prefer? Yeah, like the, the university provides a lot of theory. You can learn a lot of stuff, but eventually you're going to practice yourself. You need to invest your time and money into learning new things. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, for okay. example, yeah, I, I, I have some friends that ask me, I said, why the... Why did you buy a 3D printer? And I say like, oh, it's cheaper than iPhone. You can actually buy four 3D printers for one iPhone. <laughs> and, yeah. Is it, is it so not... cheap? No, it yeah. depends on the 3D printer. The good 3D printer costs around 80,000 tinge. And you can buy it yourself and use it at home. So as I do, example, when my mom says like, oh, the door is not locking again. Can you do something about it? I just print out the new lock and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And, and, so it's kind of practice, but you do it yourself. Like you... <laughs> So good 3D printer, right? Yeah. It's quite One day, Norlan asked, can I uh, wake him up at uh, eight o'clock? And uh, it was three in the morning. And I like, there was no chance that I'm going to wake up myself to wake him up. So I built an Arduino board that's going to kick his door at the morning. And I just uh, glued it on his door. <laughs> and in the morning, it was the most annoying thing he ever heard. Yeah. Did but, you wake up? Yeah. <laughs> what? Did you wake up? Yeah, yeah, he did. He actually definitely. Oh, and the whole floor wake up with him. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Shah Nazar is asking, have you worked with professors? Ah, uh, with professors. Uh, I might be wrong. Tordach and um, Fazli. Do you have any reviews on them? How do you pronounce their name, please? Tordach. Nerdach is a robotics professor, uh, which he uh, teaches machine learning course. I have not worked with him, but as a professor, he was a good, like, I don't know. <laughs> it, 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 was a, uh, it was a good elective. So I think, but I don't know anyone who is working with him right now. So I cannot give a review on him. I'm sorry. Berdach, uh, it's a Kazakh name. He is a Kazakh. So uh, I was, no, he's not a Kazakh. He's not a Kazakh. Why? I, well, I, I saw him three times uh, in Zoom. Two it was two midterms and one final, like last semester. And with his accent and with his like face, I thought he's, he's a Kazakh. Who is he? What's his nationality? I'm not sure, but he's not Kazakh. <laughs> well, yeah. at least uh, he is like something like, yeah. So uh, I don't. Uh, he although like he uh, teaches the microcontroller course. Um, I didn't manage to to talk with him or to learn anything from him because. Um, there were two instructors. It was Tohit um, Alizadeh. He is not a Kazakh, I'm sure. And uh, it was uh, Birdah. Yeah, but the, all the video lectures, they were recorded by the Tohit. Uh, and yeah, so I saw Birdah on the, on the midterms and on the finals. And yeah, I couldn't really give uh, a review. I said... Do you know? No. Okay. Um, so, Shah Nazar, I think you can go to evaluate probes and maybe find something there. Or, you know, so these guys don't know much about Berdach. Uh, I think he's asking about research opportunities with him. So, I. Yeah, you can actually don't... specify that, Shah Nazar. Perhaps you want to specify that. And there is another professor, Fazli, right? I don't know such professor. But to work with Birdach, you will have to have a knowledge of machine learning uh, as a prerequisite. 
It's oh. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um. So uh, I think, guys, this might be so something around time. Um. I just want to ask you to give uh, freshman uh, your three top tips that you know they should do uh, while being a Nazarbayev University student. Three must do tips or three must do things. Yeah. One from each? No, 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 you can, you can actually choose, it's up to you. Uh, let's oh. start from the Starshi. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Do stuff on time, sleep well, uh, train hard. <laughs> do stuff on time. Okay. Yeah, I mm -hmm. agree. Sleep well. Like, uh, watch after your health is very important. Uh, do not cheat. It's number one rule. <laughs> and uh, yeah, ask questions. Be interested, be passionate about what you do. So it's my three tips. Oh, thank you. Yeah, as in your presentation. Yeah, thank you. So I think like the first one uh, is uh, don't waste time. Uh, it, it doesn't matter whether you're like studying hard and uh, you're busy with uh, like increasing your GPA or maybe you're like as I said working on different like projects and places like and don't care really about the GPA uh, but you're acquiring like really good skills so it doesn't matter what are you doing just don't waste your time on like on useless thing I'm not just I'm not saying that like that you don't go to I don't know to play video games on door don't go to to do other things just just make sure that you don't waste all your time on different things and also uh i would like to say that uh you need to develop uh, your uh, networking skills so networking is important it's not like you need to have some ahashkas who will like uh, make everything for you but like uh meeting uh, new people uh, who are like in the same circle like in the robotics field and uh, contact them like uh, to have a relationships with them so that they can like somehow uh, direct you or uh, share with you some like important information and somehow they will help you and yeah as guys already said like um, health is really important so you need to eat well uh, if you have like like don't uh don't eat dosheraks only because they're cheap like well yeah at some points uh, there is no other things to eat or, uh, other than dosheraks but try to eat healthy food uh, this is important yeah yeah so thank you general tips um general and must have tips on health yeah because everything is around health and yeah, study on time. Okay, uh, thank you guys for your time. That was, I know that was the most uh, for me, um, the most informative session uh, that I you know seen in this major week, a major month. And uh, thank you for your time, for your presentations. I am sure it'll be very helpful for freshmen. Uh, we too. We also. We also think that it will be helpful. Thanks for inviting and good luck everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone. Yeah, see you all be well, study on time and good luck all to you with your studies and your research and your works. Bye.